Hi everybody and good afternoon. My name is Kip Cryer. I'm one of the orthopedic surgeons here at Memorial. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, we can't be here in person, but um, hopefully you'll enjoy this talk. A little bit about myself. <clears throat> I grew up here in Lake Charles, uh, Moss Bluff actually. Um, was homeschooled, went to McNeese for college, went to New Orleans, um, LSU for medical school, Arkansas and Little Rock for orthopedic surgery residency, and then I did one year of a fellowship for foot and ankle uh, specialization in Tampa, Florida. So I've been here for about a year now. Um, <clears throat> figured I'd go through some of the foot and ankle problems that I see most commonly. Um, um, I've got a few things here. <clears throat> I think the most common foot problem I see uh, is plantar fasciitis. Um, <clears throat> Achilles tendonitis is also very common. These are both uh, pain around the heel bone. Um, bunion's another common thing in flat foot. Um, I'll talk about a little bit ankle sprains and then ankle arthritis. So the first thing, plantar fasciitis. Uh, the plantar fascia, it starts at the heel bone and it moves along the arch and into the toes. Uh, the most common area to have pain is around, uh, around the heel bone, just on the bottom of the heel. When you're walking on it, it's very painful sometimes. It's caused by excess stress on the uh, plantar fascia. Um, so uh, it can sometimes have some minor injury that you don't really, um, maybe not even remember, but some kind of strain started this and then you have heel pain that can go on for months or years sometimes. Um, like I said, it's really on the bottom of the foot, um, right where the plantar fascia starts at the heel bone. Uh, it's worse when you walk on it, obviously. <clears throat> the thing I hear a lot is when you first get out of bed, you step down on it, it kind of stretches that plantar fascia at the same time uh, and you have a lot of pain right away. Usually as you walk on it, it gets a little better. Uh, and then toward the end of the day, if you've been walking on it for a while, it can be, uh, become more painful again. <clears throat> so what causes this? Uh, um, anything that causes stress on that tendon or that ligament. Um, so uh, obesity, uh, so if you're putting extra weight on this, it can cause problems. Like I said, any type of uh, minor injury can cause a strain there and cause a lot of inflammation. Uh, really, the, the biggest thing that we've found is a tight calf muscle, believe it or not. So when I tell people, they kind of, um, it's kind of surprising when you first hear that, but the studies have shown that tight calf muscle is one of the biggest things that contributes to this uh, plantar fasciitis. <clears throat> also, uh, when you get x-rays, you can see a heel spur right where the pain is a lot of times. This heel spur <clears throat> is not the thing that causes the pain, it's actually a result of the inflammation. So. Um, if someone ever asked me, uh, will I take out the heel spur, that, that's, that's not an option and it wouldn't help you. Um, <clears throat> so what do we do about plantar fasciitis? There, there's not a great surgery for it, so uh, we really try non-operative management uh, for as long as we can. Anti-inflammatories can help. You can take oral anti-inflammatories. There's also some anti-inflammatory creams that can help. Um, anything that cushions the heel. So any insert you can find that has a lot of cushion, uh, silicone insert is uh, very helpful. Uh, night splints, uh, this is something that actually holds your, your plantar fascia and your calf stretched out at night. So this helps more with that first thing in the morning pain, I think. Um, so you're not stretching it out as soon as you step um, or take your first step. Uh, I wouldn't be able to sleep in one of these things, but some people do like them. <clears throat> the, the biggest thing and the most helpful thing all the studies have shown uh, are calf stretches. Uh, you can also do some stretching of the plantar fascia as well. So uh, almost everyone that has plantar fascia has a, a very tight calf, uh, so stretching this out um, is the most beneficial thing. Uh, this can take months, and even when someone's very consistent with stretching out their calf, um, uh, you really only see an average of about a 25% uh, pain relief after a month of doing this. Uh, so this is something that takes a long time to resolve often. <clears throat> I prefer not to do in steroid injections for this. The studies have shown that the steroid injections don't help long term. So say one person gets a steroid injection and another doesn't, a uh, month or two down the road they're probably going to be in the same position. And there are some risks involved. So I try to stay away from any injections for this. Um, Surgery is definitely a last resort for this. Um, like I said, the, the results in, uh, haven't been great for surgery. Classically, the surgery you do 
make an incision toward the bottom of the foot and you release the plantar fascia. There's arguably no real benefit of this because in the short term you don't do much better. In the long term you do better, but if you don't do surgery you do better in the long term anyway. So I would not recommend doing this surgery. Sometimes if someone has a real tight calf muscle, maybe an old injury or something, uh, and they're not able to stretch it out, I can do a surgery to lengthen the calf muscle and that has been shown to help though. Uh, the next most common thing I see around the heel uh, is pain around the back of the heel. So a lot of times you come in and you've got pain when the shoe is rubbing on the back of the heel. Uh, <clears throat> this is most often Achilles tendonitis, a very common um, thing that I see. Uh, the Achilles is the largest tendon in the body, so uh, it sees actually the most stress of any other tendon in the body also. Um, <clears throat> the cause of Achilles tendonitis is very similar. So anything that causes stress on that tendon. So uh, if you are overweight, uh, you put more stress on that. If you have a minor injury, you can have a strain and that can cause some, um, some inflammation also. Uh, again, a tight calf can contribute to this also. Um, you can get a bone spur in the back of the heel also, and this is associated with Achilles tendonitis. Again, the, the bone spur is not the cause of the problem, it's a result of the inflammation. Uh, you, you get calcifications in the area where you get inflammation a lot of times. So, <clears throat> a little different here because the bone spur can cause some symptoms because uh, it's very prominent on the back of the heel, so when shoes rub up against it, it can be uh, bothersome. But usually the Achilles tendonitis itself is the more bothersome um, pathology. So what do we do about Achilles tendonitis? Uh, the best thing uh, when someone comes in and it's really painful with every step is you really have to rest this tendon. The best way to rest a tendon would be to, to lay up in your bed for two months and not do anything, but that's not really practical. So uh, what I'll do is put you in a boot. Um, this prevents you from using that tendon while you're walking. It's kind of like forcing you to walk like a peg leg. Uh, and it's a little cumbersome, but it's really the best way to be able to still walk and rest that tendon. This can also often take a month or even two months sometimes before that inflammation goes down significantly. Once the inflammation is down, I'll start some physical therapy to recondition that tendon. Uh, and they do specific exercises with stretching and strengthening um, that have been shown to help this. Uh, Anti-inflammatories can help with this also. Again, you can take oral or creams. Um, I absolutely will not do an injection for, for Achilles tendonitis. Um, uh, reason being is uh, I have seen some people that had uh, injections from other providers and um, the, the steroid actually weakens the tendon and I've seen these rupture. So this is a, that would be a much worse problem. Um, and again, it hasn't been shown to be any bif benefit in the long run. So if, any of, if none of this works, there is a surgery for this that's actually um, fairly successful, or very successful. Um, so to do this, though, you do have to detach the tendon. You, know, you shave off that bone spur, and you have to uh, remove all that inflamed tissue and reattach it down to the bone. Um, that's kind of a uh, longer recovery than some other things. Uh, before you can get back to any type of sports, a lot of times it's six months. Uh, but um, you can get back to some normal activities long before that. Uh, I keep, typically keep you off your feet for about five weeks, um, and you could be in a normal shoe by about eight weeks uh, if everything does well. Um, bunions, again, this is something else uh, I see a lot in my clinic, uh, being a foot and ankle specialist. Um, the cause of the bunion, um, so it's not just a, a bump on the bone. Uh, this is actually a deformity in the bone where uh, the uh, great toe um, turns in um, and causing a prominence of the um, metatarsal there. I don't know if you can see this x-ray here, but um, you can see it on the left side. It look, just looks like a bump, really, but on the right side, that toe has actually turned to the side, and that's what causes this uh, prominence. So people usually have pain around that um, prominence on the side of their foot, um, and it's worse with um, any shoes that put pressure in that area. Um, the, if the bunion gets bad enough, you can actually start pushing on other toes and cause other deformities. Uh, it'll crowd the other toes and sometimes cause hammer toes. 
um, <clears throat> what causes a bunion. Um, most often here it's uh, different types of shoe wear. Um, they've actually done studies. There, there are, is some genetic component too. Um, even in populations that don't wear shoes, like uh, native tribes, places, they still have a small incidence of bunions. Um, so even if you do everything right, uh, there's still a possibility you could have a bunion if, it's, um, um, if you have a history in your family. But uh, we do everything we can to try and prevent uh, a bunion if you can. So I, I advise against any type of narrow shoe. I've got a picture here of an, of an x-ray uh, of a foot um, outside of a shoe, no shoe at all, and it looks completely normal. But then if you x-ray it inside of a high heel, <clears throat> the heel itself is forcing everything forward, and that narrow shoe kind of forces everything, um, compresses everything uh, together. So it can cause eventually uh, a bunion deformity. <clears throat> what do we do about it? Uh, there's no way to reverse the deformity uh, without surgery. So there's no magic brace or anything that's going to realign your foot straight. Um, you can use toe spacers, these little silicone spacers that kind of force your toe over um, while you're wearing it, but it's never going to um, hold that position once you remove that spacer. But I do recommend at least trying that. So, so uh, try these wider shoes. They don't put pressure in that area. Uh, wear this toe spacer. Some of them have little pads on the side to try and cushion that area also. Um, and that's really about it. You can take anti-inflammatories again, but um, there's not a whole lot else to do for uh, bunions uh, other than surgery. I don't do uh, bunion surgery uh, for cosmetic reasons. I would only do it for, um, for actual pain. Um, <clears throat> there's a, about 100 different ways to, to treat uh, a bunion surgically. Um, people have been doing this for decades. Um, and uh, most of them are very successful. Uh, most of them actually you can walk on your, your heel right away. So um, you can walk out of, the, out of the surgery room the same day. Uh, but uh, there is somewhat of a long recovery. Uh, typically when I see patients back, it's a good six months before they feel like they're really back to normal. Even though they've been walking this whole time, you do have a lot of swelling and you can uh, have some pain in that area for a while. Um, overall, it is a successful surgery, though, and that's the reason I wouldn't do this for cosmetic reasons because this is a this is quite a recovery just for um, looks. Um, so you can't have much more severe bunions. Um, this is a, a patient I did uh, with a severe uh, bunion here, and if it gets that bad, you really can't um, realign the bones uh, normally without actually fusing it. Uh, which is, people really tolerate well, believe it or not. Uh, you don't have as much motion there, but uh, uh, it really gets rid of the pain well. Um, so depending on where you do the fusion, sometimes I'll still let you walk uh, in a boot uh, right away. If you have to fuse one of the other joints more proximal, sometimes you'll be in a cast for a few weeks. Uh, but again, most, most bunion surgery you can walk on right away. There's a newer technique uh, called minimally invasive surgery. Um, so this is something that's uh, pretty new to bunion surgery, but it's been going on for years. Um, I've got a picture here. You can actually, uh, through these smaller incisions, um, take this, uh, they call it a burr, but it's a, uh, it's a cutting device. And you can cut the bones and slide them over uh, and realign the toe uh, without the larger incisions. Now, the studies have shown that people do typically as well, and their the recovery isn't as, uh, or it's about the same. Uh, the ones I've seen, though, really have uh, recovered quicker. Um, uh, this is debatable, though. Uh, I've seen people after this surgery um, saying they're walking normally at, at, at as early as like six weeks. So. Other uh, things that are associated, like I said, with uh, bunions are hammer toes. Uh, so it's very common for me to do a, uh, a bunion surgery and a hammer toe surgery at the same time. Um, hammer toe surgery, you actually have to take a little bit of the bone out and you uh, put a pin in there. It stays in there for about four weeks. So you're trading a, a stiff, um, um, curled toe, basically, for a stiff, straight toe. Uh, but it uh, relieves that uh, pain from pressure in the shoe. Another common thing I see, a uh, flat foot. So 
people often come in with flat foot and sometimes uh, if you've had it your whole life it doesn't bother you at all but usually if it's progressive and it's something you've noticed over the years has gotten worse um, usually it is painful for people so most of the pain is usually around the arch uh, sometimes it uh, moves up around the ankle on the inside of the ankle as well uh, this is uh, usually more related to the tendon that helps, supports the, uh, helps support the arch. So it's called the posterior tibial tendon. But whenever you have flat foot, it stretches this tendon out slowly, and you end up having inflammation in the tendon, and uh, a lot of times you have uh, tearing of the tendon. So um, uh, what do we do about it? So uh, arch support inserts is the first thing I try. Uh, this has helped support the arch and take some of that tension off that tendon. Uh, again, there's no way to, to correct this deformity uh, without surgery. We just uh, try these inserts, and um, you can have a custom insert as well. We try these things to help support the arch while you're walking, and that can help with the pain. Uh, sometimes if you're having a lot of tendonitis in that area, on that tendon that helps support the arch like I was talking about, I'll treat it similar to how I was talking about Achilles tendonitis. I'll put you in a boot for a little while and maybe try some physical therapy and anti-inflammatories. If none of that works, uh, there's a surgery to uh, treat flat foot as well. Uh, you really have to, this is something similar to bunion, there's, there's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, you make uh, multiple cuts in the bones, um, usually uh, two or three of the bones, and realign these, realign the arch, um, realign the heel, and try to uh, recreate your arch. You also have to um, actually get rid of that um, inflame tendon and use another tendon in its place uh, called a tendon transfer. Uh, with a typical surgery for this I'll keep you in a cast for about six weeks so that means no weight for about six weeks and then move to a boot to transition back to weight bearing. Uh, definitely the most common injury around the foot and the ankle would be an ankle sprain so um, I see these multiple times a day. Um, there's multiple grades though. Um, uh, it involves the tearing most of the time on the outside of the ankle. Um, you, you tear some of the ligaments. So uh, this can range from just a slight stretch to the ligaments or a complete tear to the ligaments. Uh, people are often, often surprised at how long you can swell from just a, an ankle sprain as well. I tell people it can be six months to even a year I've seen uh, swelling after an ankle sprain. Uh, there are multiple uh, variants, like I said, so with these less severe ankle sprains, maybe just stretch the ligaments a little bit, uh, usually by a couple weeks you can get back to normal and playing sports if you're uh, a sports player. Uh, for the more severe ones, it can take months though, so um, I wouldn't, um, uh, sometimes it even requires a boot for a couple weeks because it's so painful to walk. Um, use a brace often, um, the typical rest ice, elevation, uh, compression, try and get rid of the swelling. Uh, but the most important thing is get your motion back, get your strength back. And that can take months, like I said, for these more severe um, injuries. So I'll often uh, prescribe physical therapy for this. Um, I don't recommend any surgery for this, uh, at least to begin with. Um, uh, they've done studies, and people back in oh, 20 years ago used to do surgery if they um, saw that the, the ligaments were completely torn. Um, but people with or without surgery do about the same, so uh, try to avoid surgery is best. Um, but there is a surgery to do for it if you keep having recurrent um, sprains, and these ligaments often will heal uh, stretched out. Um, and if the physical therapy, the strengthening, this doesn't work to prevent these recurrent ankle sprains and this um, laxity in the ankle, uh, there is a surgery to do for it. Uh, you can make an incision and tighten up those ligaments. Um, uh, sometimes you can have some tendon damage at the same time and repair that. Um, I typically keep you off your feet, uh, no weight for about four weeks, and then start some strengthening exercises around six weeks. Uh, lastly, I'd like to talk a little bit about ankle arthritis. This is uh, not nearly as common as knee arthritis, but um, I see it uh, pretty commonly um, in my clinic since most of what I see is ankle and foot related. Um, so it results in um, wearing out of the cartilage in the ankle. Uh, it's usually a result of an old injury or multiple old injuries, whether that's 
uh, some bad sprains in the past or um, an ankle fracture, sometimes that can injure some of the cartilage and that slowly becomes worse with time. Um, so uh, you can have uh, progression over the years. Uh, most of the time uh, it causes stiffness, uh, pain when you first start to, w to walk because it's so stiff. Um, and then pain with any activity. As it gets worse, any, any weight on the ankle at all can be very painful. Try anti-inflammatories, try weight loss. Um, uh, injections can sometimes help. I find that they don't usually help as they, much, uh, as they would for, say, knee arthritis or shoulder uh, pain, uh, but we can always try that, uh, steroid injections. Uh, bracing is the, the, the main um, stay of treatment for this. Um, so I'll often do a custom brace. They can fit it to you and it's very, very rigid. It takes some of that stress off the ankle as you're walking. Um, if none of this works, um, surgery is an option though. There's a couple things you can do for ankle arthritis uh, as far as surgery. Um, you can do a fusion. Um, an ankle fusion means you're going to take out whatever cartilage is left um, and you're going to put a plate and screws in there. Uh, to let those bones heal basically into one bone. So you have no longer have a joint there. So it does reduce your motion, um, but you still have some motion through the foot below there. Uh, people typically do well even without ankle range of motion, um, and, and they're usually happy because it gets rid of the pain. I keep you in a cast for about eight weeks um, in a boot to kind of transition to weight bearing uh, for a couple weeks after that. Uh, the other option is um, a little newer than um, ankle fusion, but it's been around for um, 20, 30 years now. Um, this is also good at um, uh, pain relief, ankle replacement, uh, replaces the, the cartilage completely. Uh, you place it with metal and plastic, um, similar to a knee replacement or a hip replacement. Um, unfortunately, the, the implants are smaller because the ankle is smaller, so it does you. Uh, typically have a higher chance of wearing out quicker than an ankle I mean a knee replacement or a hip replacement would uh, but again it, it is good at pain relief and it, it continues or allows you to uh, keep your motion there. Um, I'll keep you in a cast for about four weeks and then a, a boot for a couple weeks after that for this also. I think that's it. Um, um, any questions from anybody? No, no questions? Okay. Um, if you uh, uh, like to make an appointment, I've, I've got my phone number here to my clinic. Uh, again, I'm the only, uh, I'm actually the only foot and ankle uh, fellowship trained surgeon in the, in the city. Um, be happy to see you in clinic.